Hi, welcome to This Week in Ames. I'm Susan Guiasta. On today's show, we'll learn some more effective ways to deal with stormwater. My guest today is Pat Sauer with the Iowa Association of Municipal Utilities. But Pat, you play a special role here at the City of Ames. Tell us a little bit about that relationship. Yes, I work as a stormwater advisor to the Public Works Department as part of their stormwater program and also guide the program, the Smart Watershed program as well. So tell me a little bit about stormwater and why it's important that we uh, properly manage stormwater. Well, there are a number of issues with stormwater. Number one is of course the flood aspect of it and secondly is the water quality aspect of stormwater. As it rains and the rainwater moves across our impervious surfaces it picks up a lot of pollutants and those pollutants go directly to our streams. Now stormwater isn't just an issue for farmers or large businesses, it's really an issue for everybody. Um, yes, it is. If you think about where you live, your rooftop, if you have a sidewalk, driveway, uh, you know, other items, um, the water goes somewhere when it rains out. And for most of us, it goes down the street to that local storm drain intake, and then goes out to a local stream. So we're looking at ways, thinking about what can we do on our property to try and infiltrate more rainwater and have less runoff and go down the street. Well, one way would be to have less impervious surface, but that doesn't always work. You can't sort of get rid of your driveway, but you can do smaller things, other things that will help as well. Right. There are a number of things that we can do. You could install a rain garden in your yard. You could do soil quality restoration. You could have a rain barrel, as simple as a rain barrel, or you could look at native landscaping with native landscaping plants, native prairie plants or woodland plants. And as a coincidence, those are all things that the City of Ames offers rebates for. <laughs> yes, through the Smart Watershed Program, the city does have two, actually has expanded to now four rebates. The, initials, the initial rebates were the rain barrel, which is done cooperatively with water and pollution control, and that provides a $50 rebate for a rain barrel. And then there has been the rain garden rebate. And so someone can install a rain garden on their property and then get a rebate up to $400 towards plant material, towards amended soil compost, towards edgers, towards a sod cutter. But we have added two new rebate programs, which is really exciting. One is for native landscaping. And this can be if you were going to convert your yard from regular bluegrass turf to native turf, buffalo or blue grama grass, um, or a portion of your yard, um, you need sunny conditions for that. Those grasses have deep roots. You wouldn't have to mow as often. You would not have to fertilize those grasses as well. So it's, it's a very sustainable practice. Or perhaps you wanted to convert part of your yard, if you have a large yard or a garden, to native plants or woodland plants. So the city has a rebate up to $350 to go towards plant material. Information is on or will very shortly be put on the Smart Watershed website, uh, which is part of the city's website. And the other new rebate is soil quality restoration. And that is a lot of us aerate our lawns, and, but what we can do is take it a step further and aerate the lawn and then top dress with a thin layer of compost and then reseed over the top of that. And so what we're doing is we're reducing the compaction of our lawns and then adding soil organic matter in the compost and that that adds nutrients to the soil and then that organic matter acts like a sponge so you fertilize less and you water less and the result is more rain water will infiltrate through the soil. Those are all uh, great ideas in order to manage stormwater. One of the ones I want to talk a little bit about was the rain barrel rebate. Again it's a really easy step. It's not difficult to get a rain barrel. I got one and now I have two only because they're so handy to have. Um, they've lasted me the entire summer. I don't even use my, um, you know, my water spigot anymore. Right. Um, rain barrels, an easy thing that you can do. It's as simple as, and for the rebate program, is you go and you purchase a rain barrel from, it could be there are local uh, companies, businesses that sell them, or you could order one online. And then there is, a, if you go to the Smart Watershed portion of the city's website, there's a form that you fill out, bring in your receipt to the city, 
and then they will review that and then issue you a check and send a check in the mail. And what I think what you learn, which is as you have learned, is if you buy one 60 gallon barrel, we get one inch of rain that fills up very quickly. It is amazing how quickly they fill up and how, um, how much, how long that water lasts. Yes. So. Yes. So you can water your gardens. You can water your vegetable gardens. Yes. And then the aeration. That's an interesting. And the next step. I know. Do like you said. A lot of people do aerate their lawn. But this uh, top dressing is an interesting next step to take. That just uh, helps um, alleviate that stormwater even more. Right. That's right. You're improving your soil quality. The soil will start acting more like a sponge. A lot of our lawns are compacted, and we don't have a lot of organic matter. The soils are pretty poor. So it'll help improve that. You won't have to fertilize as much, and so all around, more sustainable type of practice. And go, go well, ahead. Well, so those are two of the sort of maybe more common ones, the aeration and the rain barrel. Now, the idea of converting part of my lawn to native plants, that seems like a bigger step. A little bit bigger step. So if you happen to have that large sunny yard, mm -hmm. and you're getting tired of mowing the entire yard, what you can do is set aside an area Take, select an area that's in the sun if you want to plant prairies species and then you would have to kill off the grass somehow and that could be by using chemicals such as Roundup or you could cover it with plastic or other materials and just let the grass die and then I would recommend rototilling up the grass and then depending on the size of the area you could um, there are a number of companies in Iowa that sell a seed mix depending if you want more flowers or forbs or if you want grasses or if you want both um, and then you could seed that area, and then the suggestion for that is you'll mow it a couple of times, you'll keep it mowed off, so you're suppressing the weeds, and then you're letting the, the small plants establish their root systems, and then after a couple years, you'll have a nice little patch of prairie. If you want to get things accelerated a bit more, you could plant small plugs. Um, in that area, or maybe a combination of, of both. So now, I know are... you've been involved in several of the rain gar gardens we have around the city of Ames, and um, those took a few years to get established, but boy, they look nice now. They really have taken off. Thank you. Um, you know, it was a little bit of a, a rain garden is a little bit more work, but the benefits pay off. And essentially what a rain garden is, is you create a depressional area and amend the soils in your yard, and then you would direct your downspout rooftop water or driveway water to this depressional area. Um, it would be planted to, we recommend native plants, or you could do a, a mixture of your favorite plants, horticultural plants and native um, plants. And then that water will infiltrate rather into the soil rather than run off. And so there's less water going down the, the street to the storm drain. Well, I know it was so surprising when we'd initially see the, um, the rain gardens after a heavy, heavy rain, they'd almost be submerged, but very quickly that water would be absorbed. Yes, less in the, the ones that we have installed in design, in less than an hour that water disappears. And that's, that's the way the, the system works. They're designed so they pond temporarily and then um, the soils are such that the water will infiltrate. So it, it's a very sustainable system and those, the plants that we select and recommend are species that are adapted to those soil moisture conditions. Like we said, we have some in uh, the uh, City Hall parking lot. They are probably filtering a lot of pretty dirty water. They are. Actually, if you go to the west side of the community center, center there is a, a large rain garden, actually a two-tiered rain garden, that takes on a lot of rainwater from the neighboring property. So that is cleaned up before it's, it's discharged um, to the storm sewer. Likewise, there's a bioretention cell, which is similar to a rain garden, but it has a sub drain to it, and it has uh, compost and um, sand media and some soil media. And that as well has done a wonderful job of cleaning up the storm water before it's discharged to our local stream. And here where we are at the community center, it would be um, either the Squaw Creek or Skunk River. So you're seeing a lot more of those around, sort of popping up around town. It's always nice to see them at first. Maybe people don't know quite what they are, but once they get established, like I said, they really are attractive. Yes, they enhance, um, add beauty to the property. And then of course they, you know, attract hummingbirds and, and, and uh, other birds and dragonflies and other species as well. Well, Pat, I know you're busy. Again, thank you for stopping by and letting us know about these rebates. More information is available on our website on all of those. And I hope you'll come back. Thank you very much. So are you still looking for fun things to do this summer? Don't forget, we have plenty of activities going on in our different departments and divisions. For example, movies at City Hall on Friday at 2 p.m. Those are free for 
and fun for families and children. Also remember yoga in the park on Saturdays at 10 a.m. That's at Banchell Park every Saturday, 10 a.m. If you want more information about fun activities like this, check our website at cityofames.org. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks for watching and tune in next week for This Week in Ames.